Olá, meus amigos. Hello, my friends. Muito bom dia. A very good morning. May the Holy Spirit, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in the person of the Holy Spirit, come. Open your understanding that you may understand, that you may understand perfectly His will, His word. You have ears which hear his voice. May God do this right now. Because I don't want to plant the word of God on the sand. I don't want to plant such preciousness which God has given to me in unfruitful soil. I don't want to plant in the asphalt. I want to plant in soil which is willing, willing to receive the seed, that the seed may multiply and flourish in the land. This is the will of God for your life or my life, the life of each of us. When we speak of faith, let me tell you something. When we deal with faith, people think of miracles. You speak of faith, they think of miracles. What will I receive? Oh, I'm going to use my faith. Jesus said, all things are possible to him who believes. So I will conquer this, I will conquer that, I'll be this, I'll be that. Everyone, when we speak of faith, immediately they think of the miracle. And not the intelligent miracle, the miracle of God, but the miracle of magic. They think that God is a magician and he will make magic because they go to church, just because they are charitable, just because they do something. And the good truth is that faith, my friend, has nothing to do with feelings. Nothing. Faith does not feel. Faith does not cry. Did you know that? Faith does not cry. Faith obeys. The impulse of faith itself. Jesus is the author and finisher of faith. The author, the creator of faith and the finisher of faith the one to make faith to be done in the lives of people. When he says it is finished, it's because it's done. It's been fulfilled. So when we speak of faith, you need to understand. You have to understand because if you don't understand, you won't be saved. If you don't understand, you will not comprehend a single thing which is written in the Bible. Nothing. You understand nothing, nothing, nothing. You are blind, deaf, mute. You understand nothing. Because faith, the intelligent faith, the rational faith, the supernatural faith which has nothing to do with the natural faith. The natural faith is the one which you plant rice and you get rice if the, the soil is good. You plant beans, you reap beans. But the supernatural faith, you don't need to believe in God to use the natural faith. Any person who uses the natural faith, anyone can. Unbelievers, good, evil, believers, anyone or and everyone has the natural faith. But not all have the supernatural faith, which is the faith with which the Lord Jesus created so that he could bring salvation to those who believe, who has this faith. See, when God planned to save 
when God planned to save people, what did he have to do? God as an example, God the Father, with an example of faith, he needed to let go of his only son. God the Father only had one son. He let go of this son, gave this son the seed to the world. He planted the divine seed, which is his only son, so that through his son, he could have other children, bear other children. And that is exactly what happened. He gave to the world his only son, that all those who believe in him, but not in a natural manner, but they believe in a supernatural manner. And I will explain to you what it means to believe in a supernatural manner. The intelligent faith, the rational faith, the supernatural faith. So God gave to the world his, the only son he had, meaning he, God, believed. He believed. And because he believed, he gained one and so many other whom have been saved, baptized in water, baptized with the Holy Spirit, born of the Holy Spirit, born of the water and of the Spirit, who are His children. So God only had one son. But what was, what was His secret? He gave His only son. He let go of this only son. And Jesus came to the world, gave his life, and allowed that all those who believe in him, who use the intelligent faith, the intelligent faith, for they believe so that they may have a life which is blessed and differentiated from the children of the world. So there needs to be a difference between those who believe and those who don't believe. And God said, Once again you shall discern the difference between those who serve me and those who don't serve me. Those who serve me are my children. Those who don't serve me are children of the devil, of darkness. So there needs to be a brutal and extraordinary difference between one and the other. Now, what type of faith leads a person to be born of the water, the Word of God, and the Holy Spirit? What is the secret? Well, we spoke there in John chapter 3, verse 16, which everyone knows very well. They know it by heart. For God loved the world so much that He gave His only, He gave, He gave, He gave, his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. Well, what does God expect from us? This belief. When He said to Joshua, Joshua who was there crying, mourning the death of Moses, God did not come to console him. God didn't come to bring him a word of encouragement, of comfort. Look, Joshua, Moses is with me. No, none of that. God went straight to the point. Joshua, arise. Take possession of the promised land. Arise and lead my people to the promised land. Cross the Jordan River and go there and conquer. So, see, the type of faith which pleases God, the type of faith which pleases God, which is different from the religious faith, faith which people normally express, and that is why they live a life. Far from what the word offers, Jesus says, I came to bring life and life with abundance, but this life with abundance is for those who believe intelligently, the supernatural faith. So, when he says, Arise, what did Joshua do? Joshua got up. 
So Joshua forgot the death of Moses, in other words, Joshua despised the feelings of the heart, the mourning of his friend, his leader, and he took an action, he got up. He gathered his commanders, the people, and he said, let us take possession. This is what we call intelligent faith, because a person believes in what they do not see, in what they do not touch, in what they do not feel. But God spoke to him, and the speech made him to get up. The same thing, remember when Jesus, when Jesus said, Give, and it will be given to you. Do you remember when Jesus said, Blessed is the one who gives than the one who receives? Do you remember? Normally, you see believers, the evangelicals, saying, Oh, Bishop, pray for me. Bishop, say a prayer for me. The believers ask for prayers all the time, all the time. Pray for my husband. Pray for my father. Pray for my son. These are people who believe in God. At least they say they believe in God. But in the moment in which they are pressured, they transfer, we can say, their faith. They ask the bishop, the pastor, and they think, well, if the bishop prays for me, he has more access to God, he's more closer to God than I. So he will be answered. And I will not be answered. Meaning, it's a foolish type of faith, a foolish faith, an ignorant faith, because it has nothing to do with anything. Because when a person believes, they ask and they receive. But when they ask, they express their surrender, their sincerity. They speak with sincerity. They speak truthfully. Oh my God, I'm here. I don't even know if you exist normally like this. I don't even know if you exist. But if you exist, you're seeing me. You see my situation. So I ask you. So they manifest their requests, their necessities. Meaning, first, they show their faith because they humble themselves. They become humble before the one whom they do not see, they do not touch, who they do not feel. But they have assurance that he is hearing their prayer. Meaning, they give. They surrender. They manifest an intelligent faith. Even not being a believer, as the case of, of many ex-felons who were in prison, they went in church, they were in prison. They were amongst unbelievers, swearing, screaming and killing and doing everything worthless in prison. So those who would go out in the corners to speak to God, perhaps in the corner of the wall, they would be right against the wall and say, Oh my God, I don't know if you exist, if you see me or not, but if you exist, have mercy on me, have compassion on me. Take me out of this situation and I will follow you. I will serve you for the rest of my life. Make a vow with me. Meaning, this person is not on the altar. They're not before the altar of God. But they are there offering themselves, surrendering, giving themselves as a seed to the God who they believe in in an intelligent manner. 
Então, essa pessoa, so this person, na hora, at that moment, na hora, recebe, at that moment, libertação. receives their freedom. Na hora, os at that moment, the demons leave their na body. Hora, At that moment, they stop being a felon. They stop being a murderer. They stop being perverse. Because they gave their mind. They surrendered themselves to that intelligent faith. So, my friend, this person receives. There are many who are in churches, including the Universal Church, people who are many years in the church but receive nothing. They go to church, they're faithful, they clean the bathroom, they sweep the church, they even do simple service, but they don't surrender to the author and finisher of faith. God created faith as a bridge. For you to reach him, you need to use this bridge. There's no other way. Jesus is the creator of faith. If you don't cross through this bridge, you don't reach God. If you don't use this door, which is Jesus, you don't reach God, God the Father. If you do not express in the least a faith, even if a faith which lacks knowledge, but it doesn't matter because it's faith, regardless of your religion, you can be a Muslim, a Jew, a Catholic, a Spiritist, you can be a witch doctor, you can be a Satanist, you can be whatever you want to be, or whatever you are, it doesn't matter. But from the moment in which you express a sincere and pure faith, even if it's an insignificant and small faith, it doesn't matter. That small faith touches God and He comes to meet you. It's as if from the moment you, we, manifest our faith, the intelligent faith, that moment our body is enlightened and calls the attention of God and He lives within us. More or less like this. So, faith, my friend, needs to be followed with an action. For example, let us speak of a natural faith. The natural faith is the following. I have a land available to me and I know that this land is good for corn, rice or beans. What will I do? I get the seed of the wheat, of the beans, the rice, the corn, maize meal. I get it and I give it to the soil. I plant. Plant is to give. When you plant, you're giving. And when you are giving, you are manifesting faith. Even if it's natural, you are manifesting faith on the soil, on that seed. You are sure that seed will give to you multiplied. We call this natural faith. But the supernatural faith which is infinitely more, infinitely more than this faith, is that faith which you go to someone who you don't see, touch, feel. I don't see God right now. I don't feel God. I don't touch God. No way. I preach the gospel for 57 years. I speak of Jesus. I speak of someone who I don't see, who I don't touch, I don't feel. But... I have an assurance which is so certain, something so strong within me, that nothing will shut me. Nothing will shut me before this revelation of faith, which is supernatural and that God gives me. It's not me. I wasn't born with this. I didn't learn this at university of theology. No. I learned this reading the Bible. When I read the Bible, 
From the Bible comes faith, which I need to live my daily life. So faith is not feelings. has nothing to do with the heart. Faith has to do with the intellect. You know you need to plant that you may reap. We call this faith, intelligent faith, which few people have. Many believers, but few, have this type of faith. That's the reality. And I see amongst my family, the family of Esther, many people who show faith for dozens of years, more than I, which I have as a converted person, but I see a fruitless faith, a small faith, because these people use faith of the heart of feelings, a faith filled with emotion, a faith filled, filled rather, filled with feelings. When God speaks, He does not make us feel. He makes us believe. He makes us obey because faith leads us to an action. If you don't take an action in regard to what you say you believe in, the one whom you say you believe in, so your faith is worthless. Nothing, absolutely nothing. You may even have it, the rational faith, but faith created, consumed by the Lord Jesus, finished by Him. And that is why the lives of many people is a disaster. And I say this with sadness because knowledge of the Word of God brings faith. But we have seen that the majority have carried this faith not for the intellect, but they place this faith in the heart, feelings. They think more of what Jesus suffered in the cross than what Jesus finished in the cross. They think more of the pain which Jesus suffered than the glory of Him resurrecting and overcoming death and sitting at the right hand of the Father, the Most High Almighty, to fulfill His promises that those who believe in Him, those who surrender to Him with all their heart, with all their strength, with all their mind, everything, 100%, this is faith. Faith demands everything. When you plant a seed, you don't plant half the seed. Either you plant everything or you don't plant. And if you don't believe that the plant, that the soil will give you fruit, you don't plant because you say, oh, I won't waste my seed with the fruitless soil. No, you don't plant. You don't plant if you don't believe. You don't work if you don't believe that in the end of the month you'll get a salary. You only work if you have assurance that at the end of the month you're going to receive your salary. Many people want to get money. Many people say, Bishop, get me a job. Give me this. Give me that. Please help me. You don't need anyone. When you believe in the living God, you walk on your own feet. You don't keep begging. You don't beg from faith. You are a person who gives faith. You transmit faith through your life. Surrender 100% to that which God promises. That what he said to Joshua. Arise. Arise. Take possession of that which I already promised to your forefathers. Meaning God already promised, but you needed to take possession. And the believer is like this. The fruitless faith is like this. Oh, God promised I'll wait here. Ah, oh, my friend. If you keep waiting, that it will fall from heaven, the promises of heaven. You will wait and you will die and you will not see it. You need to conquer. The promises of God are conquered. And to conquer, you need to fight. If you don't fight, 
you will remain behind, you will die as you are. Nothing will happen. You won't make history. You will be a horrible example to your children, to those who will come after you, to your family. Ah, faith is to give. Faith is to give. When we believe, we give. When we don't believe, we don't give. That's the reality. What is the secret, Bishop? Oh, many people ask, what is the secret? What is the secret of the work, of the effectiveness, of the success of the Universal Church? Which came out of abolição, the funeraria, and went to the whole world. What is the secret? The secret is to give. Every day I'm giving, I'm giving, I'm giving, I'm giving. Now, receive are the ones who are intelligent. Those who are not intelligent, who are weak, who are soft, who are indolent and lazy, who are soft like a worm, who want to do nothing. They stay in disgrace, waiting like the worm. No, my friend, don't be like this baby bird waiting for the worm to be fed because you keep on waiting and waiting and waiting. How long will you wait? Oh, Bishop, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 50 years. Do you know why? Because you gave nothing. You never gave your life on the altar. You never placed your life fully, fully on the altar. You prioritized. You prioritized your heart. You prioritized your will. You placed your will in first place. So you will not give anything. You won't give what God wants. It's all for all, my friend. It's either you go or you get hurt. Either you surrender 100% in what you believe in or go away, live your life that you may not deceive yourself with a fake and fraud faith. Do you understand? So you see how many people who say, Oh, I want to receive the Holy Spirit. I did the fast of Daniel various times and nothing happened. Oh, I already fasted. I did this. I did that. Nothing happened. Do you know why it did not happen? Because you left a backup plan. You have a backup. There's something you don't want to give. You don't want to place it on the altar. Do you know what it is? It's not that savings which you kept invested in this and that or the other. No. It's that sin which you enjoy alone, which no one sees, no one knows, but God sees. You never gave your everything. That's the reality. Those who receive the Holy Spirit receive everything from God. The seal that they are of God. They are children of God, truthfully, born of the water and the Spirit. They have their rights as children. They're not of a different offspring. No, they are children. They were born, formed, the DNA of God. Born are those who surrender totally, completely, restrictionless, unconditional. And not everyone wants this. Not everyone wants to give their everything. They want to give just a part, perhaps even 99%, but if it's not 100%, don't even try because you will deceive yourself. So the secret of faith is to give. If you give, it's because you believe. If you don't give, it's because you don't believe. If you don't give, it's because you don't believe. Those who believe, give. Those who don't, don't give. That's it. Summarizing everything which I said. Those who believe, give. They obey. To obey is to give. To obey the word of God is to give. So the secret, my secret, is to give. Every day we are giving. One way or the other we are giving. Giving, 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 giving. And I have been speaking to the pastors. I have been teaching them that the secret of their success depends on them. It doesn't depend on me. Neither the Holy Spirit depends on them. They 
need to be the seed. They need to be a seed on the altar. They need to surrender on the altar. If you honor God with your life, if you surrender, God will honor. Your life will multiply. I was speaking with my colleagues short a while ago in breakfast. Excuse me. It's very strong. It's worth sharing to you. When I gave my life to Jesus, it took me a year, more than a year, accepting Jesus, accepting, accepting. Every time I would raise my hands and accept Jesus, but I would never give my life to him. I would accept, but I would never give. I'm more than a year hearing good messages, wonderful messages, etc. But nothing would change. Till a day, I was convinced by the Holy Spirit that I was not saved. I did not receive yet His Spirit because I never gave. I never surrendered. I accepted. Freely, you take the wrong bus, they say. Freely, it's free. Everybody wants. But, it's what the believers say, oh, the grace is sufficient. Jesus says, my grace is sufficient, etc. My friend, I remember, after I surrendered myself, convinced by the Holy Spirit, I surrendered 100%. I didn't think of anything else but to want to transfer, to give that which God had given to me to other people. I was 19 years of age. And when I had this faith to surrender my life on the altar, when I surrendered myself, I said and asked God, Lord, I need a person who will help me. I want to get married. I don't want to be married to be happy. No, not that. I don't want to marry to have a woman, a female. I don't want to marry to have kids. I don't want to marry to build a family and have heirs and take my name ahead, forward. No. I want to marry with a person who will help me to give that which you gave me. That's it. So my intention is not to marry to be happy because I was already happy. The intention was to marry to have a person who would help me. As he did with Adam. He did to Adam and made him a helper. So my intention was for the best. I wanted to marry, to give my best. Because being single, I couldn't give my best. I wanted because I wanted to give. But give more and more and more and more. But I needed someone to help me. So God honors those who give themselves 100%. So you who is watching me right now, do you want to marry to be happy? Do you want to marry to fulfill your dreams? No. If you want to serve God, if you want to save souls, if you want to give that which you received from God, then don't measure sacrifice. Don't keep counting what you give. You give everything on the altar. And God will fulfill all your dreams. Because in what we honor God with our lives, with our seed, He honors us with His blessings naturally. Naturally. So the universal church of the kingdom of God is fruit of a surrender, personal. And no one said to me, give, give your best. No, none of this. I did not learn this. I, obviously, led, guided by the Holy Spirit, 
did this consciously i surrendered my life hear my father it's all yours and then god honored that offering and this offering started to multiply throughout the world god wants to multiply you my friend god wants to make of you the offering as jesus was the offering of god to win me god wants to make of you the offering his offering that he through you may win others do you want to win souls you don't keep waiting for a b or c surrender your life place your life on the altar oh i did bishop so if you did why did you not receive the holy spirit because you did not give don't lie to yourself don't deceive yourself with the surrender when you give your best you also receive from god the best which is the holy spirit it's pointless for you to have done the fast of daniel all these days no being in the fast of daniel but if you do not offer yourself fully as an offering as a seed in the divine soil 100% you receive nothing that's it and who decides this is not your heart who decides is your head god speaks those who have reason obey those who don't they feel it they feel it just it do you understand what it means faith faith is to give those who believe give those who don't don't give that's it done the heart the faith which comes from the heart does not give because the heart does not want to sacrifice the heart hates sacrifice the heart just wants to receive the heart just wants to receive but the intelligence wisdom gives because god gave the world his only begotten son that he could give to me and win all those who believe in him god bless you tomorrow we will touch more on this fundamental rock of salvation salvation comes through faith faith living faith a total surrender not by the grace of god the salvation come it's by the grace we are saved through faith by the grace we are saved meaning god manifests his grace but you need to give you need to manifest your faith so that the grace is joined with faith and then a new person is born god bless you till tomorrow in the name of jesus amen